Can an external graphics box like the Akirio Node provide a major performance boost to the 2016 MacBook Pro over Thunderbolt 3? In this video, we'll show you the answer. So the Akirio Node is a Thunderbolt 3 E graphics box. So basically an external graphics box or external GPU or eGPU uh, that connects via Thunderbolt 3 to your MacBook Pro. So this means that you can put a full-size graphics card inside of the Akirio node and tap into the power of that graphics card right from Mac OS. Now for this particular test, I'm using the AMD Radeon RX 480. This one's from Sapphire. Uh, thanks to the folks over at Sapphire for providing this for us uh, to test this eGPU setup out. So the AMD Polaris line of cards is actually supported somewhat in Mac OS Sierra. So that is why it shows this in particular. On the other hand, the Pascal cards from NVIDIA, like the GTX 1080 and the 1070, are not supported in Mac OS. So that is one thing that you wanna keep in mind if you're trying to use an eGPU setup. You're gonna be able to use the Pascal cards in Windows if you use a bootcamp installation, but you're not gonna be able to use them in Mac OS, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and unbox the node right now. So. Just gonna take this off. Okay. So here is the front panel of the Akidio Note. Of course, you have the Akidio logo right smack in the middle. You have the Thunderbolt 3 text right here at the bottom. And then you have this perforated design here that allows airflow to get through the Akidio node. Uh, so the front is fairly simple. Now let's turn it around to the side here. So on the left side, you have this little panel here, which is gonna allow air to get through the unit as well. Uh, and that's pretty much all that's on that side. So let's flip it around again to this side. And the only thing you'll see on this side here is the fan for the power supply unit, which is built in to the Akirio node. You have a 400 watt power supply unit, a SFX unit built right into the node. So you don't have to worry about supplying power to this thing externally. So finally on the rear of the node, you have two little openings for your PCI, either single width or double width card. You have a Thunderbolt 3 port right here, single Thunderbolt 3 port. You have of course your power connector, and then you have your power switch. And that's pretty much it outside of a handle for carrying this thing around. You're probably not gonna to wanna to carry it around too much because it's fairly bulky and fairly large. And then you have these two thumb screws here to take the cover off so that you're able to install the GPU. Okay, so now we're gonna undo these thumb screws here so that we can get to the inside of the unit. There's one here and there's one on the other, other side as well. Now removing the cover is a little strange. You actually have to push in on this uh, handle or on the back of the unit in order to push towards the front of the case so that you're able to remove the cover. So basically like that. All right, so we're gonna just continue to remove this. Now inside the case, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You have your PCIe slot down here. You have your main board. You have your SFX power supply. This is a 400 watt power supply. You have two 6 plus 2 PCIe Molex connectors to go directly to your graphics card if need be. You have the fan in the front here, uh, which is going to help with airflow. And then of course you have room for a double width graphics card if necessary here in front. So uh, everything that you're going to need is, is here to power a graphics card externally. And this thing is big enough, it's wide enough as you can see to fit a full size graphics card. I'm going to actually put that RX 480 in here in just a second to show you guys. Okay, so now what we need to do is just unscrew these two thumb screws. And then we're prepared to insert the GPU. Just remove the little plate. And we're good to go. And as I mentioned earlier, the folks over at Sapphire provided us with the Radeon RX 480. Uh, for this test. So we appreciate that. Shout out to the folks over at Sapphire for helping us out. So now let's go ahead and unbox the graphics card here. 
So here it is, Sapphire's RX 480. Um, this is a full-size graphics card. It is dual width, and it has two HDMI ports. It has a DVI port, and it also has two DisplayPort connections. It also has LED lighting uh, embedded behind the Sapphire logo, which is kind of cool. So there's a little button here. You press that, and you can change the color of the logo. And just another little side point, this card does come with a backplate as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the RX 480 inside the Akidio node now. So all you need to do is simply line up the graphics card PCIe connector with the PCIe slot right here. Um, then of course you want the two openings right here on the back of the Akidio node to line up as well. And then you'll screw them down with those thumb screws. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so now it's secure. Right in there, just like that. So now we'll just tighten the thumb screws down. Okay, got it in there. Okay, so the last part of the installation involves simply plugging in the power connector. Uh, you have the six plus two set up here. You wanna plug in the smaller one first on the outside like this. And then it, that allows you to plug in the six pin adapter like this. All right, so now we're ready to go. So we can put the case back on. All right. Okay, so now we'll just screw in the two screws here. All right, we are good to go. And you can find the power cable and Thunderbolt 3 cable inside the box that comes with the node. So here's your power cable, no power brick because the PSU is inside the node itself, which is nice. And then you have a Thunderbolt 3 cable as well, along with documentation, stickers, and some cable ties. In the future, you're probably gonna to wanna to get a longer Thunderbolt 3 cable because nine times out of 10, you're not gonna want the node right next to your MacBook while you work. So now that everything is hooked up correctly, we just want to turn on the node like this. And now you simply plug in the Thunderbolt 3 cable. Like that. Now early versions of the Akidio node come with firmware that needs to be updated to the latest version. And you can download this from Akidio's website. We have a link in the post on 9to5Mac as well. Once you download that, you're gonna run the firmware update tool. You'll see it right here, the Kido T3 node update tool. So we just double click on that and select yes, but you're gonna run into this error if you don't have your Thunderbolt drivers updated on Windows. It's gonna say SDK, service not found, Thunderbolt service doesn't exist. Uh, this was really perplexing me at first, but uh, eventually I was able to figure it out and get the right Thunderbolt 3 driver download uh, to work. So. What we'll do, and I'll show you how to do that now, and I've also included a link to the Thunderbolt driver in the post on 9to5Mac as well. So we're just gonna open up this Intel Thunderbolt driver here. So what we wanna do here is we wanna double click where it says Setup, and we wanna select Run, and Accept, and then Install, and then Yes. All right, so it completed successfully. So you just click finish here. And to verify, we can go into device manager, close this out. We can go under system devices and it should say Thunderbolt controller 15D2. So that's what it should say for that controller. All right, so now what we can do is we can run the firmware update tool again from Akidio and we should see something different this time around. Now, there you go. So you can see the tool is loaded. It did recognize the Akidio node, and then you can just select it 
and then choose next and go through the update. Now I've already done this update, so I don't need to do it now, but just in case you do, um, this is the way you do it. And you actually have to do this in order for your node to be recognized successfully. So before you do anything else, make sure that your firmware is up to date with the latest version. So that's all you need Windows for in this particular exercise. And you can use a bootcamp installation to do all of this. Then we wanna shut down our MacBook completely and disconnect the Akidio Nodes Thunderbolt 3 cable. Now we wanna boot the MacBook into recovery mode. To do that, you wanna hold the Command key and the R key at the same time while powering on the MacBook. Once you're booted into recovery mode, what you wanna do is go to utilities and then go to terminal. And once the terminal loads, as you can see here, you wanna type in csrutil space disable semicolon reboot, and then press return on your keyboard. Okay, so now comes the fun part, using the Automate eGPU script. And you can find the details on the post on 9to5Mac. The first thing you wanna do is to connect the Akirio node to your MacBook using the Thunderbolt 3 cable. So just plug that in and then boot up your MacBook to Mac OS. Once you're up, you wanna to go to the post on 9to5Mac. We're gonna copy and paste all these commands into the terminal and it's very easy. I have it right here for you. So this script is basically adding the device ID for the GPU to the kernel extension file found in the system folder on Mac OS. So the first terminal command downloads the automate eGPU script. The second command gives it execute privileges. The third command switches to your desktop folder. And this fourth command will execute the script. And once we do so, it's gonna ask for the password, your administrator password, put that in, press return, and then you will see something that looks like this. So you can see that it detected the external GPU, the Radeon RX 480. It didn't download any NVIDIA web drivers because I'm not using an NVIDIA card. And you can see where it added that device ID to system library extensions and the AD AMD Radeon 4100.kext. So now it's rebuilding the cache and now it's asking us to restart. So thanks to GoldQ's script, it really is simple. Of course, you could do this manually if you wanted to, um, but this script makes it so easy and it works with a variety of cards, including AMD and Nvidia cards. So it really just takes a lot of the, the legwork out of making this whole thing work. So now we wanna shut down our computer and we'll go to the next step. So before proceeding, I just wanted to remind you guys that if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And also subscribe for more videos if you like this type of thing. Let's get on with the tutorial, shall we? Okay, so I have this DisplayPort connector coming from my 32 inch 4K AOC monitor, and I'm gonna go directly into the RX 480 right here on the Akidio node. So let's do it. All right, so we're connected. Now here's something that's a little different. You're going to need a USB-C device plugged into the adjacent USB-C port uh, right next to the Thunderbolt 3 cable going to the Akidio node for hardware acceleration to work. If you try to boot up like this, you're gonna get a display on your monitor, on your external monitor, but it's going to be without hardware acceleration. It's gonna be real, just real jerky, real slow to load and it's definitely not the experience you want. So make sure you have a USB-C device like this Aki SD card USB-C reader or Apple's own USB-C to USB adapter. You can use either of those. You just plug it right into the adjacent port and then you're good to go. So now when you boot up, you should get an external display with hardware acceleration. So now that we have everything connected and plugged in, it's time to power up the Akidio node. So let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna boot up for the first time here. We're gonna see what happens. Now as macOS is booting, you're gonna hear a little whoosh sound from the graphics card indicating that things are working properly. You can see the light come on for the external display. And there we go, folks. Look at that, beautiful. 
I don't know if you can see this, but right now I'm running at about 78 frames per second, 68, 80, 89 frames per second. And you can run high settings at 60 frames per second, um, or at least close to that generally in some of the benchmarks like Heaven and with um, Valley as well. So it really is no surprise that the eGPU is perfect for gamers because you're gonna get much better performance in games when using this external GPU. You can see there around 78, 73 frames per second. You're usually maxing around 30 frames per second using the integrated graphics at max settings. Now here's the Heaven benchmark and you can really see the difference that an eGPU can make with gaming performance. Notice the 1080 Ultra, no anti-aliasing. You're getting over 40 frames per second, whereas with the integrated graphics, you're getting well less of 20 frames per second. So you're going from non-playable to playable, basically, when using the external GPU. And the same picture is painted with the Valley benchmark. Notice the 4K low, no anti-aliasing benchmark. You're getting over 30 frames per second, which is comparable to 1080 low no anti-aliasing with integrated graphics. So you can really see the difference that an external GPU makes. Now, unfortunately, the latest version of Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't work with my eGPU setup, but I downgrade it to 10.2.2 and you can really tell the difference here. Man, it's a huge difference in export time when you're using effects. And then you have the Geekbench 4 OpenCL benchmark. You can see the major difference between the RX 480 and the Intel Iris 550, more than double the overall score of the integrated. And finally, the Cinebench OpenGL benchmark, you can see the difference there, paint it very clear as well. You're gonna get much better frame rate when you're using an external GPU when compared to the integrated graphics on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, that Intel Iris 550. So the big question is, is an eGPU worth it? Is it worth your money? Is it worth your time investment? And the answer to that question is mixed. If you're a gamer, then you will be able to see tangible differences. For instance, here is Rocket League running on my 2016 MacBook Pro with that Iris 550 integrated GPU. And the frame rate is hovering around 30 frames per second. Sometimes it dips a little lower uh, depending on what's going on on screen, as you can see right here. So that is playable, but it's not really the best experience. And if you have any more demanding games, you're gonna find uh, even worse results at times. So you do see those noticeable benefits when doing things like gaming and even with Final Cut Pro 10. granted the newest version doesn't quite work yet with this eGPU setup, so you will have to downgrade to 10.2.2, but the differences are there. Now the question is, is it worth the price? Uh, because it is an investment. You're gonna pay around 250 for the node, you're gonna pay somewhere around 250 for a graphics card like the RX 480, um, but you do see those benefits there. Look at the frames per second with Rocket League using the eGPU, but that is not the only thing you need to consider. You need to consider the time investment that it takes to set this whole thing up, and you need to consider other factors, such as the fact that the eGPU can't drive the MacBook Pro's internal display, so you need an external display. And there are other factors, such as the unit size. It's a big box and it's gonna take up a lot of space on your desk, and Akidio doesn't provide you with a long enough Thunderbolt 3 cable to relocate the node to the floor, so until you get a longer Thunderbolt 3 cable, it'll be next to your MacBook Pro, which is not a good thing because the fans can get a little loud with the unit itself and graphics cards. So a lot of things to consider here. Make sure you read the full post over at 9to5Mac because I try to break it all down there and I have some additional information for you to read. Again, folks, this is the Akidio node and it does make a significant difference. The question is, is it worth your time and your money? Only you're gonna be able to answer that right now. But what I can say is that the future looks fairly promising for Thunderbolt 3 and external graphics enclosures as long as Apple is willing to support it. Uh, that is the big question. Will Apple make it more difficult or will they make it easy? Will they see the potential here? Have they already seen the potential for that matter? And will they make it easy? Well, we'll see in the future. But right now, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.